What's up you guys, Craft Farms here, welcome back to Edgewater, Saskatchewan, where today we are hard at the corn harvest. Uh, we're about halfway done with uh, this field one here, and uh, we're moving right along, getting it knocked out as fast as we can, and... Uh, getting things done. We've had a few problems along the way, but we're getting through her here. And uh, getting things done. So both of our trucks are currently full. I've pulled, this is the third time that both trucks have been filled. And uh, we're about to have a full grain cart here soon. So the plan is here is we're going to fill this grain cart. And then uh, I am going to go dump both trucks. <clears throat> and uh, get those unloaded. We have already got quite the amount of corn. Not quite near as much as I was thinking that we were going to have by this point, which is okay. We still have a lot of corn uh, sitting here. So we're going to see if we can't empty this combine and top us off. Uh, we'll see whatever we can get out of this combine. Hopefully it fills us, but if it doesn't, then it doesn't. But hopefully it uh, will and then we're going to go dump both of our trucks and keep on rolling <clears throat> we do also need to get our field cultivator going at some point um, if you guys see up in the top right there we got $52,000 um, I did have to borrow money I don't even know what came out honestly but Something came out and sent us like 14 grand in the hole. So we were unable to continue harvesting with course play. So I took out another, I think it was like $60,000, $70,000 of loan to keep us rolling. This is pretty much going to fill us. It's going to be close enough. And now these guys can continue on their way. And we are going to start dumping trucks. So we currently have like 6,100 bushels of corn in storage already. And... Uh, we're about to add another, I don't know, I think like, I think it's roughly 3,000 uh, between the two trucks, close to it. We are still on the first bin. I kind of forgot just how large these bins are uh, that they hold. I believe it's 500 and some thousand liters that they hold. And uh, let's just take a look here. Um, no, 369,530, and we're a little over half full. We're about 60% now, so we're getting there. We're, we're for sure going to have one full bin, if not uh, another maybe half a bin. And we're definitely going to have a good amount of corn. We'll get this truck emptied, and then we're going to go out uh, this north road.
would be nice if this trailer had a uh, third hopper like it should. Well, maybe not should, but normally that's a third hopper there where it's kind of closed off in the back. By the time we get done here, both of our combines are going to be full once again. There is truck one. So yeah, we're, we're about 3,000 bushels between these two trucks. Right around there. So quite a bit of corn between these two. And then once we get this truck emptied, we'll take a look and see just how much corn we have uh, accumul accumulated so far. And once we get done with that uh, first field there, we're going to have to put some fuel in our combines. Some fuel and some def, because they are getting down there. That first combine's down to 39% on fuel. So it is definitely getting down there. Burning a good amount of fuel, that's for sure. Thankfully, we have quite a bit of it uh, stockpiled. That international does look pretty fine on that auger. I think that international is going to be kept around for quite a while. It'll make a good auger tractor. The only way we'll get rid of that guy is if a day comes where all that we have is uh, silo complexes versus using grain bins. But I don't think we're going to end up doing that. I think we're just going to stick to grain bins for the most part. Well, even when we do end up with a silo complex, we're still going to have grain bins, but... Alright, so let's grab this guy, and we're going to run down here and unload it. And then we'll come back down, and we'll unload that front combine first, so that way he can continue rolling. This will fill the uh, first truck there. It'll fill our 50-footer. It's kind of funny that this 50-footer holds less than that jet trailer does. I would have uh, definitely thought that it would be the other way around. Would have been nice if uh, the dealership would have had a set of Super Bs sitting around that they could have uh, loaned us, but this uh, T-800 works. I'd like to actually buy a truck like this, but get a set of Super Bs to run behind it. So we'll see. Might, uh, might have to add to our loan a little bit and see about picking a setup. Uh, like that up from our dealership. All right. 
right, that truck is filled up. Now we'll run down here and going to be fun getting out of here though. We might just have to say screw it and drive through the crop because otherwise that's a long ways to back up. Let's take a look here. What do we got? We are at 9,162 bushels of corn already. We're already looking at almost a half a million dollars in corn. So it's an insane amount. But it is definitely going to be nice. So, yeah, we're going to just cut across right behind him here. Because that is way too far to back up. And it's going to take a lot of extra time to go all the way down behind him and come back. So, let's go a little unrealistic here for a moment. So hopefully we have enough fuel and death in these two combines to finish. Uh, this field. They are definitely burning through it. It'd be nice because then we don't have to try and lease a fuel trailer um, or try and buy one. We can just run them over into to the farmyard there and we can fill them both up from our tanks. Good lord, and that other combine's already 60% full. Goodness, we just can't keep up. We still got a fair amount of this field to go. Oh, lordy. Ooh, we're getting way too close. Let's chase down to that other combine and get him unloaded. Cause he's about to fill up. I made that a little too sharp. <laughs> My bad. Let's get him to get his auger back out here. Oh, 
hopefully that combine will wait just a tad bit to try and put his logger out because I know he's going to okay we're clear Let's go dump this. I think that's going to be the last pass up there. And then he'll go down to this little bit that's left. Definitely see the squish in them tires from all this weight. So we'll just fill this front hopper and then we'll unload that uh, STS there. We'll unload our combine because he is full So we're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Little by little. Alright, so that guy is good to go for a little bit longer. And we have enough we can fill that truck, so let's do that. Get two more trucks out of here. Now that guy's going to come down over to there and continue going.
even though for a ways it's not going to combine anything because course play decided to act up and all of a sudden it's cutting through the field rather than continuing on its headland pass. So, is what it is, I guess. Course play is very helpful and a great thing to have, but it is stupider than hell sometimes. Anybody that uses it, I'm sure can agree with me on that one. So we'll get this truck filled. Meanwhile, let's get this guy out of here and dumped. I'm just going to go through the field here. I don't know what that combine's doing, so... Okay, there he goes. Maybe he is going to pick a little something. Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong combine there. Alright, let's turn this big heavy monster. Ooh. Let's get up over here. A lot of axles to go over this thing. And here goes another load in the bin. Nope, we better open our tarp before we start collapsing something. Perfect. Well, let's get this guy back out to the field. One thing, though, with a uh, set of Super Bees, if we do get them, is that then we're going to be trying to find somewhere to put them. But... If we end up making some machinery changes like I plan on us making. Um, let's see, where do we want to leave this guy? Um, then we are going to end up taking out a lot of the things in our little building there. In our Quonset that uh, has a lot of stuff in it. So we'll be able to pull them in there most likely. Or we can just unhook them and back them in separately. That's always an option as well. Oh, wait a minute. We got back up. That bin is full, I think. Let's take a look here. 100%. Perfect. 
So we got one full bin of corn already. So we're going to jump in here. We're going to get this moved over to the next bin here. Perfect. So we get this auger put out, and then we'll get the jump auger moved over here. Perfect. Let's close this lid. Awesome. So one full bin is about 10,500 bushels roughly. A little bit more just because we dumped some into that next bin already. I don't know how much though. Ooh. There we go. Let's get this truck unloaded now. Get this guy unloaded, get it back out in the field, and keep on rolling. That end bin is going to be fun to fill if we ever get to that point. With the uh, angle that it's at, it shouldn't be too awful bad. Little manager. Make sure we're set on front tip side. All right, so then this truck, I'm gonna pull right up over here. And we need to go up here and grab our grain cart. Now let's get these combines unloaded. We're gonna go unload that front one first. Because I want them to keep their distance between each other. I don't want them super close together. Otherwise, that's how we have even more problems than course play already gives us. But alrighty, folks, I think that's going to do it for today. And I think this is actually our last Edgewater video for the week. So it'll be about a week before we're back on here. But uh, what I'm going to do is finish off this field and get that last one opened up. And then we'll be uh, back to work here. And we'll get our corn harvest finished up. Get to starting on some tillage and uh things like that so hope everybody enjoyed the video if you did be sure to smash that thumbs up button and as always folks we'll see you all tomorrow